Hi, good afternoon. Thank you all for jo joining us for today's Wednesday Wise webinar sponsored by Evident. Um, our topic today is automating franchisor COI tracking to manage risk and protect your brand. And today we have Doug Imholt with Marshall McLennan Agency and David Wellner with Evident ID. So I am going to kick it over to David right now to introduce Evident and then get us started. Great, nice to meet everybody. Uh, I'll toggle through the bios here. Um, you know, so Evident uh, is an Atlanta-based company. Um, we uh, we have a, a modern exchange to uh, to share um, to share data um, between individuals and businesses and businesses and businesses. And we first and foremost use that platform to exchange insurance-related data, like verification of insurance. Um, Doug's bio. Actually, Doug, maybe we'll go, go back up one, and 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 we'll go through your your longer, more distinguished bio, and then I'll I'll, I'll go with mine. Yeah, distinguished, sure. Uh, welcome everybody for joining. Doug M. Holt. I lead the franchise practice group at Marsha McLennan. Uh, long time IFA member. Um, our you know Marsh is a large uh, national broker. Uh, I and my team of dedicated. Insurance and risk experts focus specifically in franchising and the uh, insurance and risk needs of franchisors and franchisees. Um, and uh, prior to coming to MMA, I was a franchise owner myself. So franchising is, is in my blood. Yeah, and, uh, just to show, explain the connection. Thank you, Doug. Um, uh, we, we're here because of Doug and, and Marsh. Uh, we've gotten a chance to work with quite a few franchises on their insurance uh, compliance programs uh, together with Marsh, and uh, he, he encouraged us to be part of the IFA. It's been a great experience so far, and it's, it's great to be with you and, and everybody today. Um, all right, so like I said, a shorter um, bio. Uh, lead partnerships, uh, Marsh being one of our nearest and dearest partners. Um, with, a, with a focus on on risk, risk and risk mitigation. Uh, I added a fun fact. I ran out of credentials, so here's the fun fact. Uh, I realize that not all franchises are restaurants. Okay, I, sometimes I forget. Um, but uh, I have never seen a, a fast food product that I, I wasn't willing to at least try once. Um, we could we could probably spend the full hour uh, just on that topic, but uh, you know, like stuffed crust pizza, gotta have it, gotta try. I love the fried chicken wars, um, even the stuffed burritos from uh, Doritos, stuffed Doritos from 7-Eleven. Uh, even try those. If you're wondering, like, if I ever draw the line somewhere, uh, a few years ago, KFC uh, came out with this sandwich called the Double Down, and it's basically not really a sandwich; it's just like more of like a heart attack uh, in your hands. Um, and I, I still believe I'm alive today because I haven't tried that one. But uh, if anyone anyone follows up after this webinar with stuff I haven't tried, uh, I'm always willing to try it and rate it. Um, all right, right, we'll get, get more serious. Uh, Doug, back to you on, on the content. Yeah. Sounds great. And for those of you that might know me, you, you know that I don't push away from the food table very often either. Um, so our discussion today is going to be focused on best practices for reducing risk to your brand through uh, effective certificate of insurance tracking. Um, but before we do that, we're gonna take a little detour to the high seas. And I'm gonna read this quote and, and let, let us know through chat uh, if you know who this quote is attributed to. Um, and I put my glasses on to do that. When anyone asks me how I can best describe my experience in nearly 40 years at sea, I merely say uneventful. In all my experience, I've never been in any accident or any sort worth speaking about. I never saw a wreck and never have been wrecked, nor was I ever in any predicament that threatened to end in disaster of any sort. Other than being a terrible run on sentence, does anybody, uh, if you want to chat, uh, let us know you think that might be attributed to? If we can. Anyone? Well, Thank you. It um, is Captain E.J. Smith of the Titanic six months before he ended up at the bottom of the ocean. Now, why is that relevant to what we're talking about today from an insurance and risk management and certificate of insurance tracking standpoint? Um, we work with you know dozens of franchise systems, thousands of franchisees, and one of the things that we'll hear is, oh, that's not going to affect me. You know, we hear this from franchisees. That, not everyone, but often. That's not going to affect me. I don't have to worry about it. I'll worry about it when I 
when it happens, right? And by doing that, that exposes them to significant risk, which thereby exposes you as the franchisor to significant risk. And it's something up on the slide here called vicarious liability. Now, I'm not a, an attorney, uh, I'm an insurance uh, professional focused in franchising, but in the so I put the, the, the legal definition up there, but in the context of insurance, what this means for you is you as the franchisor are at risk of being pulled into allegations and claims that happen at a franchisee's location, okay? So that example could be driving. It's not just delivery if you're, you know, a, a QSR, your restaurant chain. It certainly could be, um, you know, if you've got wrapped vehicles, whether trucks or cars, uh, not you, franchisees, um, or uh, they're driving uh, customers to uh, a doctor appointment, or you're going to do some work in their home, or, you know, et cetera, across that, or franchisee employees are driving their own car. They get an accident, that certainly can bubble up to the franchisor. Same if you're using independent contract. Um, can be happen, you know, as easily as a bodily injury, a slip and fall or something other type of bodily injury at a franchisee's location. We've seen some increases in foodborne illness. We've also seen uh, increases where there's a cyber incident, a ransomware uh, that uh, some bad actors get in, shut down um, the system and you need to find out where that happened. That could come in through franchisees location and also allegations. If you're a you know, spa concept, salon, school, you know, et cetera, the allegation around sexual abuse and molestation. Now, allegations or a claim doesn't mean that that claim is legit, but if the franchisees do not have the proper insurance requirements, um, do not have, you know, the franchisor listed as additional insured, which we're going to talk a little bit about. These are all things that not only put the franchisee's business at risk, but it puts the franchisor at risk. And that is a big reason why, uh, why uh, COI tracking is so important. So just briefly on, on the next slide, um, you know, there's, a, there's from a risk management or insurance trends, Certainly we're, as I just talked about, we're seeing more claims happen at a franchisee location, creating greater exposure to the brand. During a time, and this is for a separate presentation, but because of joint employer over the, that, that pendulum going back and forth, we're seeing more franchisors, and it, understandably so, take a step back and say, we're not gonna provide guidance on certainly HR issues and, and things of that nature totally understand. But also we're seeing them pull back in areas of safety guidance and, and resources that they provide. And, and they're leaving it up to the franchisees. Now, some franchisees do a great job of it. Some, because of cost pressures, are not. And, and the thing I talked about with Captain Smith, they're like, ah, we'll deal with that when we deal with it. And you've got the cost pressures. And so those are all of that where franchisees are looking to save some money, reduce costs to their insurance, all of that creates more exposure to the franchise. Right now we know, and, and you know, as, as we kind of segue to the next slide, David, um, we're talking to franchisors all the time about certificate of insurance tracking. And they, they're, they're somewhere along that process, right? They're like, we're trying to do it. We're, we, we try and keep up. We're, we're, we start, we stop, you know, we're trying to automate, you know, all those sorts of things. And, the, and so, um, but it's challenging, right? And so I, I don't mean to be Captain Obvious here, um, uh, but I am, um, you know, we'll just say, start by assessing your risk, okay? So as a franchisor, you may say, hey, we don't own any units, right? We're, we let, all these are franchise licensed, um, so as a franchisor, we're just, you know, supporting, guiding, et cetera. But especially over this last year, we've seen a lot of pivot in terms of way franchise systems and franchisees are selling their product, delivering their product. So it's really important that you understand what services, products, your franchisees sell, deliver, et cetera, right? Along those lines, um, 
I, I read a lot of FDDs. I'm kind of a nerd that way. I don't know if it's the old franchisee in me or what, but um, sometimes we'll see really generic insurance requirements in the franchise disclosure document or the franchise agreement. It'll be a million general liability per occurrence, two million aggregate and workers comp. Um, every system is different, whether you're uh, you know, a restaurant, whether you're a retailer, whether you're an in-home care provider, whether you're uh, a firm that does you know, some in-home maintenance or you know, things like that. And along those lines, so one of the things we recommend is really be specific. Um, not not over insure somebody, but want to give an example because this I think is going to be something that really lends itself when you look at automating your process that David's going to talk about. So a couple of years ago we started working with a franchise system that does uh, I don't want to get they do in home rem light remodeling projects, um, and they. Um, you know, the, the franchisee will go in and, and do a light in home in the residence uh, project and they'll leave. So insurance 101, very high level, general liability covers bodily injury and property damage. So if the franchisee, their work creates some property damage in that house, typically covered under general liability. However, there's a part of general liability called completed operations, okay? Franchisee's done, they leave, that work is now completed, that falls under general liability. So if a day later, a week later, or a month later, the homeowner says, well, the work that you did actually created other damage to my residence, that falls under the completed operations portion of general liability, okay? Why am I giving you all that? As we started working with some of these franchisees, we found that some of them were covered by the direct writers of the world, the state farms, the farmers, the American family those policies specifically exclude completed operations. So the franchisees were not covered for the work that they do once they were done with that project. That's a long example, but it's gonna be one of those areas that when you're looking at certificate of insurance tracking, it's just, a, again, kind of another one of those areas you're like, oh my gosh, how do we make sure that we do that right? And I think as we go through this, and, and certainly David's gonna highlight some of the ways from an online automated standpoint and, and the way that Evident does it is a lot better. Just a couple other quick things I wanna add on here. Certainly additional insured status. I think every franchise system we work with in the FDV, it'll say additional insured status is required. Now you can get that on three main coverages, general liability, auto, uh, and umbrella, okay? Those are the three, general liability, auto, and umbrella. Um, but make sure, I think, you know, stating that it's required and follow up is gonna be really key on that. That's the best way for, as a franchisor, for you to get defense and indemnification coverage under your franchisee's policy. And then the, the last thing I'm gonna mention here, and, and again, I think this is gonna, this is really, as we discussed, going to be a value when you really go to an uh, automating this process. Uh, I'll, I'll see a lot of disconnect between franchisors saying, you know, we're trying to manage, but then we don't want to hold somebody in default, maybe just because they don't have high enough limits. What's that cure process and how you manage that, I think is really, um, really critical. And just the last thing I'll say as we transition to the next slide is, not knowing what your franchisees have or are doing isn't a defense when you're pulled into a claim. So the next slide is the last slide I'm, I, I want to talk about. I'm kind of the opening act um, as we, you know, because again, a lot of, uh, I have a lot of conversations with clients that are doing it manually or trying to move, you know, are moving to that automotive, autom automotive process. And one of the reasons that um, we've partnered with Evident is because a, they have um, got um, solutions for a lot of these challenges around the, the manual process. So number one, first, I, I, I'm you know singing to the choir here when you know we already know franchise development out you know paces the infrastructure of a franchisor and you know, franchisor staff is already wearing multiple hats. 
And obviously over the course of the last year, that, that certainly there have been franchisors that have, that have pulled back on, you know, just staff. And one of the things just um, I wanna make note of is that a lot of times we'll see that compliance resides kind of in that legal administrative area and they're trying to collect it but then at some point there's a handoff to the franchise business coaches because they've not been able to get the answer. And oftentimes there's a disconnect there, which again, I think going to an online process is really gonna help. We know that it's ongoing, right? Every month there are renewals. Um, we talked a bit about the economic pressure on the franchisees. And then the last five bullets here. This is I think one of the biggest challenges if you're uh, franchise or staff and you're responsible for COI tracking. Um, yeah, there's a certificate template, right? But COIs, the, the certificates can change from year to year. They may change agents. Agents issue certificates differently. They don't always have the insurance requirements. There are some unique coverages. So how do I know if I'm the franchise or staff that this really meets uh, our requirements, as I talked about on that completed operations uh, area, or if there's, you need uh, sexual abuse, molestation supplement, things like that. All of these are areas that leave the franchisor and the brand exposed to serious risk. And I want to transition to David to, you know, as we kind of outline, you know, what are some of the, the, the challenges of tracking as he, as he looks at kind of the uh, online uh, world and, and what do you see today? What does that landscape look like? Thanks, Doug. Yeah, look, I mean, I'm not a franchisor, so it's almost like I wish I wish we could include everyone on this in the audience into this discussion. We'll, we'll certainly open it up for questions. Um, but I want to start with everything we're hearing. Uh, we've been out, you know, talking to a lot of franchisees, solving a lot of these issues. Um, and uh, we've tried to lay out four, four themes that, that come up quite a bit. Uh, the first one is automation, right? So, you know, it's uh, you got this uh, process that happens over and over again. Um, you might as well stamp it out. Um, there's certain elements of this process that are really mundane. Uh, what I hear is like it's it's important because it's about risk, but it's not so much strategic. Like, you know, get this thing automated as fast as possible. Um, that said, uh, uh, franchisees, franchisors can be really unique. Uh, that we've come we've come across all kinds of asks of I want control over this, I want control over that. In fact, the biggest reason not to hand this off uh, to any kind of software third party is, is, is that you've got to have a bespoke approach and uh, um, you know, configurability uh, from the branding uh, to the way emails go out, um, to instructions and language, um, even to the exceptions. Like I, I, wanna, I wanna override this and I wanna bend here. Uh, compliance is not always black and white. Um, so, so it's how do you automate, uh, but also make it uh, highly flexible um, is, is what the challenge we hear about. Uh, absolutely, people want real-time reporting. They want to know with a bird's eye view. Of course, they want the details, but bird's eye view, real easy to understand, easy to share. Most people we work with have leadership or brokers that are uh, multi-stakeholders that want their eyes on just knowing this box is, is, is got a big check mark next to it. What does that risk exposure look like? Um, and I got a sample report to get into because uh, some real richness there. Uh, improved compliance. So like, you know, the, 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 the unfortunate reality is that a whole lot of, uh, of our customers or franchise, franchisors we run across actually don't have that strong of a starting point. Um, if, they, if everybody was in compliance and everyone had their COI just waiting right there to be reported on uh there, there really wouldn't be any kind of pain in this space um but but there's lack of visibility uh which, which right out of the gates you don't have compliance people don't respond to you that you don't even know if they're in compliant and then when they do reply um their, their coverage may not meet what you what you require whether you've changed your requirements or whether they've changed their coverage uh or everything in between so and then some of the details that that, that doug spoke about um so one of the things we often get asked to do, and this is what we're most excited about actually, is like really helping to bring the compliance level up. Um, you know, not just sort of taking the, be the, just the truth teller, but how do you help people raise that level of compliance, which is why we're, why we're doing this in the first place. 
Yeah, but uh, that's that's really David. That that really falls on the franchisor, though, right? They're the ones that have to maintain compliance. So how, you know, how does you know number one automating, but how does evident then, you know, kind of help them get there? I mean, I think that's you yeah, know right, right, right. So ultimately, right. ultimately, you know, we're never in a position where we're making you know the the true arbitrary decisions. You're in, you're out. And you know the reality is, is in, in the franchise or world you can't you can't shut down you can't just shut down uh, a store and say stop operating you know we got to keep going so so actually a lot of pressure is on us to figure out how to help um and and this is actually where all or almost all of our featured functionality ideation is driven into um and, and look it, it, it some of its nuance some of this is the branding the instructions the, you know the, the bones of what we're doing to make for a high enough responsive rate uh, the request, their designs to be persistent, but not annoying. And, and, you know, it's like, take that off my hands, right? Like, you know, it's always the ones who don't respond to me that are my problem child. So, uh, yeah. you know, yep. so, so you have to, you have to help with automating that. So there's some elements of the product, um, being adaptable to desktop versus mobile. So people aren't, you know, running into a problem wherever they are, if they're on the move, more and more, more and more uh, businesses are on the move. So like, how do I do this on the move? Um, opportunities to resubmit is built into the product. Um, the, the administrator can rely on the automation, but also, also send out an ad hoc re-verification. Um, a, a number of things, and I might get into more down the, down the presentation, but uh, if all else fails, uh, they don't, their coverage doesn't meet requirements, really big is being able to offer them coverage that meets requirements and and that's one of the beauties of right partnering with you guys march right it is we don't we're not we're not a broker we don't we don't offer insurance but you know you line up the right broker like marsh in this case we built this into our ui to say hey you don't meet requirements here's why and you either resubmit what you have maybe you got to go add an additional insured as a remedy here or go take a look and 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 get an offer and that offer is tailor-made to meet the requirements of the franchisor. So it's like, you know, you're getting this insurance and you don't need to fret as to whether or not it meets requirements. You mentioned a challenge earlier uh, that the, the uh, requirements don't get presented to the broker and they've got to write insurance and they don't have the, we don't have the FTD in front of them. So, so the idea is if you have already a programmatic pro, um, coverage in place, you know, all else fails, you can offer them coverage. So that, that's a, a great way to lift that compliance level. Make sense, Doug? Yep. Yep. Thank you. Um, and then, yeah, you know, I mean, who doesn't always ask us to save money, um, save money, but they don't just say like, reduce my administrative burden. Um, and uh, as long as I'm happy with my administrative production, that's great. I'll pay a little bit for your software. And uh, what they're really doing this. Yeah, this, this happens to us when we rent cars, you know, they offer, they try to very good salespeople at the car dealership. Like, you know the car rental stuff like they always want you to buy insurance and you're like i know i have insurance and i think i'm covered but i kind of want to get this additional insurance and you feel good if you have double coverage it means you can kind of like be a little bit more reckless with that rental car and nobody's traveling these days i understand i'm sorry to be <laughs> not sympathetic to that but but i'm doubling up on the insurance um and i know i'm paying more well franchisors feel the same way it's like i'm i'm requiring that all my network buys insurance and they're paying good money for that. They don't even have your scale. So they're, they're paying good money for that coverage. And then you're getting charged at the corporate level for vicarious liability, and you're not getting real credit for having a good compliance program. So it's a big impetus to say, hey, how do we actually leverage our compliance and our behavior here to go save money, both at the corporate level, and then possibly how do we help our network save money too? Um, so, so that's really uh, what drives a lot of the you know, ROI, if you will, of, of having a good program. Uh, let me move to the next slide. Uh, you know, five must-haves uh, for COI tracking. We just wanted to provide some of the best practices. I'll just present them at a really high level. One is if you're going to automate anything, it's the interface with your network and the collection. Uh, you want to make that easy. As soon as you send out your own email, uh or your own repository to request these documents you've kind of lost the game because where do you do with that document when it comes in where do you then move it to how do you store that over time how do you keep a record of that 
as years go on and renewals go on. Um, so you, you want to get that collection automated. There's a lot else you want to automate, but you absolutely want the collection piece. Um, CY analysis and decisioning. We see a big uh, stretch of complexity here. Some folks, real simple, every, every franchisee is the same. They look exactly like one another. And let's, set, let's uh, apply a set of rules against the coverage and we'll, we'll do pass fail. But more often than not, we see the nuances. Some franchisees uh, have multiple locations. Some have one, uh, some offer liquor, some don't, some are in certain countries and the US, uh, you have um, earthquakes in certain parts or floods, you know, so the coverage is going to be nuanced quite often. And, it, and, and if you want to be able to do this at any kind of scale and handle that, okay, now I've got my COI. If I could digitize that, then I could run it through these different decision engines and certainly not throw that in front of human error. And you know, I'd say human error, like not that big of a problem if it's always the same, but if you have any kind of variance in what those coverage requirements are, you wanna be able to, to programmatize that as well. Uh, I already covered the, the coverage options to some extent, but like, here's where like, you know, a winning program would have an answer for your franchisee. If they don't have the coverage that they need, give them something. We run into all kinds of franchisors that have their preferred broker. Whoever that is, it should be Marsh. Um, and you know, you know, why not? Why not leverage that buying power? Uh, leverage that negotiation. Also leverage that point that we made, which is like tailor-made. Give them the coverage, not a penny more, not a penny less, for what they need to meet my requirements. This is actually really straightforward in franchisees, because in, because the franchisees they only have one entity, more or less, to prove their insurance with. They're doing this for you, the franchisor. So why not have them give them an option to buy that coverage that's perfect for meeting your requirements? Um, continuous monitoring. Uh, absolutely, you know, Doug mentioned this is an ongoing service, a uh, need, ongoing process. Um, you got to stay ahead of re-verifications. That's absolutely where you can have lapses. Um, you know, we, we, we think about this as uh, an evolution, but the more data you can connect to, whether it be through your broker who you, you do offers with or whether or not your population might buy from an existing broker or there's some consolidation there. Best of breed uh, tracking systems will take advantage of some of those connections so that you have real ongoing monitoring. Not only are you increase, improving the, um, the, uh, the, the veracity by now having a real time um, COI, of course, this is now you know, more authoritative, uh, you can have alerts that tell you when something's out of compliance. As soon as something gets canceled, an alert goes there. Um, you also, uh, you also, of course, get, you could actually up the experience there, right? If you if you've got that kind of a link, then you don't longer have to, you don't even have to do a collection on the front end of this. So that there's a real opportunity there. Uh, and then lastly, on reporting and communication, this want this should be real time. This should be ongoing. Both. The report that goes to to you, you know, so that you know at a moment's notice what what the network is looking like and where the risk is, um, but also so you can have a link to your network and your franchisees, whether it be helping them with instructions, helping them stay ahead of new needs, new requirements, should those evolve. Um, and uh, because this is a this is a virtuous cycle, right? So you learn more about your network and the coverage they have. You might see opportunities like excess coverage. Or hey, I could, I could require more coverage uh, across the gamut. So you communicating those are important, and keeping that ongoing link with them um, is important as well. David, um, hit, and yeah, you. Sorry to interrupt. You may be getting to this on another slide, but it, it just prompted something I know we get asked from you know our clients a lot, and and that that's you know you're gonna have you know there's very most people are not insurance experts. Um, you know, that work at a franchise, or in fact, a lot of people that work in the industry aren't, aren't insurance experts, but um, the, the, the question we get a lot is, okay, on kind of the whole, you know, decision, decision, like um, I gave that example of completed operations, right? Like um, you, somebody could look at a certain say, oh, they got 1 million general liability and 2 million uh, in the aggregate, gee, they have general liability, but kind of what depth, you know, should a, a, an online system have to be able to provide that next level of feedback to know that, hey, 
I, I, we're, we're really making sure that verifying that in that case, they have completed operations or they have that type of coverage. It, is, does that make sense? Because I get a lot of that question like sometimes, well, we know they need some of these additional things, but how do we know that it's there? And maybe you're getting to it yeah, well, you, later, you but I just wanted to throw that out there. It makes sense. You mentioned that, no, definitely. Like you mentioned the remodeling example earlier, and then there's some some more detailed coverage you got to get to. I mean, the reality is like we find like it's kind of like uh, uh, I guess it's called last mile delivery for a reason. But like it, the UPS driver, if they if they only stop a mile away from your house, like it's it's not that useful, right? So you know, look, there's there's kind of like easy, medium, and hard stuff to verify, and we've we've seen it all, and we've we've, we've while there are, of course, some limitations, uh, that, you know, insurance can get very complex. And you guys, you guys have found a way to say, you know, <laughs> some of these policies can be pretty outrageous. But, but, but the way we look at it is there's a bunch of straightforward things on the COI, highly programmatic, basic. Let's go verify them. Expiration dates, um, limits, uh, uh, additional insured, right? That's kind of the easy stuff. Um, then you can get more complex, but still on the COI, uh, you know, um, the types of nuances that you described. Um, I, 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 forgive me, I'm forgetting what you said was needed for the remodeling, but, but that, that, but that would Completed be something. Completed operation. Yeah. Right. That would be something that shows up on a COI. Um, but, uh, but then you get to the more complex. Um, you know, uh, you, you might have to go to a policy. And there are cases where we go to a policy, uh, right? Because sometimes the COI, really all that is is a representation. Of what's really written in the policy so then you know if you're going to go to policy there's a lot of opportunity and richness there and of course like programmatize a heck of a lot of it but this is what's nice about our, about an operation you absolutely need this right it's 80 20. 80 percent can be programmatized 20 percent needs to be sent to a human being you must solve it both ends of that um and and, and that's that's a piece of the solution um yeah the other thing is like it is important to not, as I was saying, it's important to not not be, be whole, pigeonholed to only pick one set of requirements. So if you have a certain amount of risk you're exposed to with your franchisees and they're all the same, great. But what about your vendors that come in and repair locations? Maybe those are technology vendors and now you got to add cyber coverage. Well, you can't say I'm going to verify everybody for cyber. Let's just go verify this subset for cyber. So you got to be able to go deep and also configurable across your, your, your groups. We call, call those groups. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick a coverage type, I'm gonna set a set of criteria, and then I'm gonna apply those to subgroups. And look, there might be multiple people on this call that are franchisors that own multiple brands. That, that could come up as well, right? I wanna manage this by brand. That's a, that's a need that we've seen as well. Um, thanks, Doug. I think I was ready for the next slide. I mean, look, these are just, I want to get into some some of the anecdotes, but like some of the highest level things that, that we've been able to, to work with franchisors on. Um, you know, we talked about automation a lot. Uh, the idea is to actually absolutely maximize everything you possibly can. If people on the call are thinking, oh, maybe these guys have something new, every single COI can be digitized just by scanning it or taking a picture of it through a mobile phone well uh you know if you're in this business you know that that's not that's not always doable uh but certainly if it is if it is automatable it's all that we, we take care of that and and you want to maximize that you want to kind of keep stamping out what's programmatic um you know visibility can mean a lot of things i refer to this uh but what what we found is it's not it's not visibility um, just just on the body count. Like if I've got 500 franchisees and you know 499 of them are single location and one of them is 500, like just saying you know 50% is in compliance or 99% of them or 98% of them to be more precise with the number I gave you to, is in compliance. Like that, it really matters. Is is hey, is that 2% include that one with the 500 stores or the 200 stores? Like you know you gotta. You got to look at visibility, almost have a risk manager hat on and say, like, what does it matter? What does it really tell you about the true risk uh, of the business? Um, I want to get to a report on that. But um, you got to make it easy for the franchises all along the way. They don't really want to be bothered. I mean, the best is when you actually get a connection to the data source. You don't even touch the franchise again. But the idea is the franchisees on the move, 
um, and you want to have a lot of nimbleness and flexibility in the UX and the UI that you provide them. You don't want to make them register for things. Uh, you just want them to be able to maybe take a photo of a COI if that's appropriate for them or to drag and just be done. Um, and, uh, you know, again, all of this, all of this is to have the highest level of compliance possible with the strictest requirements you could possibly have that's reasonable so that you can pass as much of that, like, that risk down to your network um, and, and then optimize the cost, right? Then you should be paying less. And, and then how do you how do you help your network pay less is, is a big piece of this. Um, I want to just just double click on a few of these. You know, I, 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 I feel like if you had a drinking game and you're on this call, maybe automation is a little too much. So I'm going to try not to use the word automation again. We still get through this slide. Uh. <laughs> you know, uh, just programmatic, predetermined schedule. Like we, we get we, we get, you know, like can you can you set an email so that it it goes out before an expiration and for us we want it 45 days out and for us we want it 60 days out and for us it's 30 and then hey don't bother them every day after that only right only send them that email once a day and of course if they respond stop sending them emails so you just want to think about that type of programmatization but configurable all along the way um you know uh yeah the the uh you, when you think about what, how do you make this easy? You want to be thinking about the two populations. There's your network, your franchisees. They're extremely important to you. They're 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 uh, ideally your revenue source. Uh, you don't want to be a, this pretty a burden for them. So that's why you want to automate there there. But but the, 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 then there's the administrator. Um, you really want to make it give the administrator all the tools. You kind of think about it as like a pilot in a cockpit. I want to be able to. Um, to add and insure it really easily, you know, add a franchisee uh, really easily, or I want to be able to upload a bunch of franchisees really easily into the system. Um, I want to be able to manage my contacts because I, I got a pool of contacts associated with those franchisees. So very much like uh, see a lot of needs on both sides of the house. Get get a lot more feedback and noise from the from the franchisor because that's who we work with directly. And but then the franchisees say, hey, I didn't respond to this, and here's why. Uh, or stop bothering me. I'm not the one. I, I, uh, I don't think I have to have this coverage or whatever it might be. And you get feedback coming in that way as well. And you just, you know, keep figuring out what what are those frequent things that are problematic, and then just building them in, building them into the software, so you don't they don't they don't become recurring problems. I want to. Can I add one thing here, David? And uh, you know, um, here's where I'm going to wear my franchisee hat. Like, I don't think compliance is a dirty word. And I also think that through this process, there needs to be messaging as to why this is important for the franchisee, what's in it for them, right? It's not just, oh, we're going to make sure that you have the right insurance coverage, but why is that important, right? It's it's protecting their balance sheet. What 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 happens at one franchisee affects another another location. Um, I, I just think there's a, a lot of value in that. And at the end of the day, keeping everybody moving forward, focused on, you know, improving, you know, their, their sales and, and, you know, average unit volume and all that sort of stuff is really important. So I think there's a lot of what's in it for the franchisee is really important. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, look, every, this is just a piece of that. I, I realize it's not the whole thing, but every franchisor we've worked with um we all start by partnering on a, on a communication campaign campaign that sounds like a month very multi-month process just a week or two we've we, we, we've we've found best practices we found out what's worked well have a few templates as a starting point but of course this is customizable let's communicate this communicate this out to the field um let everybody know what's ahead of us uh and and certainly uh, emphasize why this is important um the, the other piece, though, of course, is the economics. Um, you know, it's there's the carrots and the sticks, right? And the reality is, is that it's actually hard to use sticks uh, for franchisors. I've seen some franchisor agreements that are pretty strong. I mean, you could you could say, hey, if you don't buy insurance the way I need you to, I'm actually going to buy it for you, and you're going to pay for it. Uh, this is maybe uh, a, little, a little harsh, you know, or uh, a little too much teeth you're looking for in your your agreement. Um, but there's an economic incentive on the carrot side which is we're gonna help you, we're gonna help you buy the coverage you need and not more than the coverage you need. And ideally, you're gonna negotiate a good, a good deal for them 
maybe through Marsh and and offer them that as long the way along the way as well. So that makes it easy for them. And then of course the other value is once you once you acquire your coverage through one of our connected partners, you know you don't have to go do this again. So as important as it is, you don't have to lift a finger, which is a great convenience. That's the the most the best way to get a, a compliance program uh, humming is that people are compliant uh, while they sleep, as long as they pay for their premium. <laughs> um, okay, thanks, Doug. Um, just an anecdote here, like. You know, was, we did not clean up uh, a gas station here, but but uh, we, we we worked with one very large franchise and a franchisor uh, convenience store. And um, look, so absolutely, some of our franchisors have a different starting point. This particular one, like uh, these things, compound really low visibility. Um, we 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 run into franchisors that's like we don't know we don't know what coverage there is. Um, because we don't ask, or we only ask reactively, only when an auditor shows up and says, hey, what's this compliance program look like? So if the visibility is a problem, then you, you, know, you're, 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 you can't even figure out what's, whether it's compliance. Um, accuracy is another big theme. You, you may have a, a contact at all your franchisees. I mean, you're not, you're not only talking to your franchisees because you need to collect their insurance coverage, but that franchisee contact may not be the right contact uh for 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 this program they might be it might not be the right person to have the coi handy in fact they might say uh i'm not the guy or gal i need you to talk to my broker um and then and then of course the compliance itself can be out of compliant and we we, we always just we look to baseline and then we look to lift and i'll just dig a little deeper into that contact piece like because you don't you, you want to you want to have a technology that tracks contacts absolutely like we're not going to tell you tell you you know this is not if doug is the person who's supposed to respond let it be doug but if doug decides hey i'm on vacation i need someone else to reply to this you know give him a way to flip the request to his colleague or his store operator or if he has multiple locations the one person that he thinks should handle this or give him the opportunity in the in the technology to send this to his broker. Like ah, I don't have the franchise or had added as the um, additional insured. I know I need to add that, so I'm going to forward this on and let my broker take care of it instead. So there, you got, you got to be nimble in order to handle that problem with with contacts. And of course, over time, you learn who the right contacts are, and you could adjust the accuracy. Um, but yeah, compliance, all kinds of ways to get compliance. Like I tell you, it's 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 a it's a it's a balance. So it's, with this case that I'm showing you here, uh, without getting into too many details, there's the we need people to buy, you know, current ver current insurance. Um, we need to give them a path to do that. In this example, they were they were getting a lot of price hikes, and, and a lot of people were falling out of compliance because of the rising prices of coverage. Um, but also, how do we revisit our our rules? So we talked about decisioning, like how do we maybe lower some of our requirements appropriately um, to to make this reasonable for people to follow? Um, you now, look, a lot of franchisors have really well thought out requirements, but some of those requirements may not be realistic for your stores at this time, given the dynamic that we're in right now. Right. So you, you see an opportunity to do that. Um, and I've referenced for exceptions. Uh, this is like like this is the going rogue maybe a little bit here, but we actually get a whole lot of, you know what, uh, this doesn't look right, but we're going to override it. We want to make an exception. We want to make an exception for uh, the year or the quarter. Or we want to make an exception ongoing. Let me let me explain what I mean by that. Is you know we had one customer who's like we because of COVID and no one's going into the store. We think this one million dollar requirement is too high, so we're gonna we're gonna reduce this one on this time to a half a million. That's happened, but it's also it could be as simple as you know we have a name matching component in our service. You know, of course, right? Like if 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 the franchisee's name, if their business name that's listed on the coverage doesn't match the name that that our franchisors give us, that's a red flag. Like we should we should say that oftentimes that's a rule. Let's cancel them. But we're not we're not perfect at this, right? So you could say, oh, even though the entity is different from the entity I have in my system, well, what I could do is I could change the entity in my system to get that right. But then, you know, what our customers are asking for is just like, can I just, you know, 
can I just decide that these two names are the same and let that be let that be a permanent override? You know, let that just be the way it is so that we don't keep failing people for the same reasons. You know, these all these little things are actually like almost feel like corner cases when they come up. All of them lift the compliance level over time. So, David, I know we're kind of getting to wrap up, but one I, again, I'm 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 pretending I'm sitting at a, a franchisor and I'm wearing that compliance hat. So, like specifically, what type of reports would I see at the franchisor? Like, I know there's a whole dashboard, but what are you know specifically some of those things that that I am going to be able to pull up that that would benefit me? Sure. Yeah, we had the opportunity ahead of time to plant questions, and now it's like this one feel will feel planted because like there it is, my report. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, sorry, I don't want to destroy the whole no, that's perfect. The call, that's, but um, yeah. okay. So, look, we we could get into the details of the dashboard, but like what I mentioned earlier is, you want to know who's in compliant, of course, who's in compliant, who's out of compliant, and why. That is the base, the baseline. We don't even call that reporting. We actually think that's more of dashboard. Like you go into your dashboard, you want to be able to take actions. That's that. But the report is meant more for the strategic components. And it's it's all done with the risk piece in mind. So I'll just go through a few examples. Like you're seeing compliance levels, but they're the, yeah, sure by insured, but how do you weight it by actual risk? Because there's nuances of the risk by coverage type and by different different subgroups you might have that are you're exposing more groups so you're seeing it's more generic this could be customized but like you know how do i really get to the true risk that this store represents maybe it's a 30 million dollar store versus a two million dollar store whatever toggle that is that drives a risk we want to make sure that you can see the risk at that level am's best ratings look most people just say hey if it's not an am's best rating of x well not x but like a or b fail them right and that happens but but even better is what is my distribution? What are the who are the underlying carriers behind all this coverage? You mentioned early on that the trend is towards saving money, cutting costs. Well, why don't I just go to a less strong carrier that's at a lower AM's best rating and get a better price? Well, let's give you that stratification so you're really aware of the underlying underlying um, uh, backstop that is right because if a claim happens and there's a lawsuit and there's a need. That carrier strength, you know, certainly matters. Let's see what, what our exposure is. Um, operationally, while we take all this off your hands, knowing where the expirations are happening, like seeing how your renewals come over time, it informs everything from communication to when I need to be worried. Maybe a lot of folks are in compliance. When is the right time to roll out a change or a new ask, et cetera. So having that view uh, of what that ongoing need looks like is something you're seeing in the middle. Where have I made exceptions? Hey, if I'm non-compliant, why? But not just why, like that should go on the dashboard, but like, what are the trends showing you? Like, hey, for the most part, it's this one broker that's writing this coverage. And every time this broker writes coverage, it's not working out. Well, like maybe we could directify that, right? I sort of, sort of troubleshoot where your non-compliance and where your risk is coming from. And then rather than go into examples of what the right-hand side means, all of this stuff we trend over time, because we work with our clients to elevate, they want to raise the level of compliance. Why? Two things. They want to know, well, they're a little bit different. They want to know how they compare to their peers. So, so the more and more we're doing this with franchisors, the easier it is for us to say, how does this, how does it, is, what does good look like? Is 65% compliance good, bad? It's all relative. So how does this compare to my, how I started? How does this compare to where I am now versus my peers? But even that is not important within itself. There's no medal you get by being the best pizza franchise or uh, that has the highest compliance platform uh, program. It's I'm going back to my insurance company and I'm saying, what gives, right? This is where you play hardball with your broker and you say, I'm, I'm in a great compliance level. I'm better than my, my peers. This data, I have real hard data to prove this. If you come to your broker now and you ask, make that ask, why don't I pay less in my premiums? They'll say, well, we don't have any data to back that up. This is all meant to be the data that is, is driven into that. So when we sit down with our customers, we don't say like, here's your report, you know, go get some savings from your insurance. We, we actually just, well, we do do that, but we, we, 
we actually are just asking, what can we add? What do we need? And we'll speak to brokers too. What do we need to drive off of this data that we're, that's, that, that's coming out of our compliance program so that you can go do that, right? So it's a, it's a, 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 a feedback loop that we're working. So um, the report is kind of purposeful to get to, get to something that can, that can optimize spend. All right, I think that is it. I, I'll leave it to you to close and let's leave a few minutes for questions. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, um, thanks everybody. I, you know, um, you know, I'm a big believer in ha having been in this space a long time that th this is important. It's not about us, it's not about evident. It is about um, protecting the brand. It, it is also about, you know, that reducing and mitigating risk and certainly, the more that franchisees are in compliance, by the way, the more that leverage you do have with insurance carriers and coverage and those sorts of things. You know, uh, communicating is so important. Um, again, I mentioned a little bit before, you know, making sure that it's not just the stick, but the franchisees understand why it's important. And, you know, again, one of the, the ways that, um, you know, moving to an online platform can help with that communication. And I'm a big rinse and repeat guy. You can tell by um, how follically challenged I am. I've done it so many times. But it, because um, franchisees insurance renews every month, just that process of rinse and repeat, it's one of those basic blocking and tackling things that um, just helps improve the overall system. And that's and, and, and that's what this is all about in this way, trying to just advance things a little bit better, reduce risk, uh, reduce your vicarious liability, and uh, overall just uh, set you and your franchisees up better. So um, we do have a couple of minutes uh, for a couple of questions, if, if anybody has anything. Let's see if we go to the... Yeah, I might want to give up. Uh, I don't know if Caitlin, you're jumping back in, but this is the time where we we say we open up for questions and please submit them. Um, Doug, I don't know if you have access. We did get, I do have something here, and you talked a little bit about it. Like, if there's a variation of requirements, so sometimes you'll have uh, single unit franchisees, and you'll have some people that own five, ten, fifteen and the insurance requirements are different by level, either number or revenue or whatever. Some, you know, if it's a restaurant may serve alcohol. So how do you handle that variation on requirements? Yeah, we touched on it, let me repeat, and let me add one other twist. It's like, first of all, like, this is the biggest, most anxious need when someone is doing this manually. Like if you're doing this manually and it's X hard, and then now I have a varying level of requirements for different groups, different franchisees or business models, et cetera. Now I've multiplied, whatever the challenges of doing it manual, I've multiplied the decisioning challenge. Hey, look, once you've digitized the data, once you've digitized it properly, you've basically extracted the data off the coverage, the COI or the policy, running it through a decisioning engine, actually pretty straightforward. So the trick is this decisioning it, it all gets solved upstream. But then as long as you got the right rules in place downstream, you could, yeah, the trick is, sorry, is, is, is digitizing it. Then you can move it through the decisioning. Um, the other thing though that comes up, just to add a twist here, is franchisors have their view of what it means to be in compliant, sure. But once they learn what coverage is out there, like now I have full visibility into my network and I know what coverage they have, either that or whether it be other macro elements or trends or what they might learn from what their competitors are doing or peers are doing, they may want to change. They want to change those requirements. So that's where it gets nice is you could retroactively change those requirements, but you could do a sort of a what if analysis on the data once it's digitized, or you could just change it going forward. Um, so you can kind of think about the compliance rules as a dial. And that's what, what, what robust decisioning really uncovers for you. Great. I uh, got one more here quick. Uh, so uh, let's see. So must be at a, for like a multi unit. So it's the question is what happens when the contact info isn't reliable? Maybe there's a, a new 
um, person managing this, it's a multi-unit franchisee and you're trying to request, how do you, uh, how does uh, automation respond to that? How, you know, when you're not finding the best person, if I'm understanding that question right. Yeah. So uh, when the con contact info isn't reliable, when the person you are requesting the certificate from it isn't sure. there yeah, or isn't the best for interpreting that one right but like you know yeah to me like you know fran franchisees uh can can change hands um there could be different there could be turnover inside of your franchisee i'm sure no one on the phone has any turnover in their in their stores or in their network uh, that never happens right um so you know look this whole thing gets run by by contacts by emails and if those emails are not good then we're not going to we're not going to get visibility. So what we've had to do is build in capabilities to be able to redirect requests to say, hey, I I'm not the guy. I got to redirect this, or re, like I mentioned, redirect to the broker. So and including a feedback loop that improves that data over time. Uh, a really important piece because if the if the stuff goes nowhere, uh, black hole, then you'll never get the compliance you need. So so good question. That's great. Well, I think we're up against. I think you might have one more. Uh, thing to mention, but I want to thank everybody for being on the call and certainly reach out to any of us if you have any any questions at all. I, I just got a message from Caitlin that that has been in multiple people to ask for costs. Um, so I just want to I want to say two things on that. Um, one is uh, really uh, high ROI pricing. That while it's not really possible for me to tell you the actual pricing because there's a few tiers involved on a call. Uh, you're certainly happy to disclose that um, upon an initial conversation. Uh, that's number one. But the pricing is per insured, right? It's per franchisee. And um, I want to get to this slide. Uh, if you've been been good enough to make it all the way, I see the the body count. It's pretty close to where it was when we started the call. Um, that that you know because of our involvement with IFA uh, and your participation on the call, we wanted to make sure we offered something. To, to initiate a conversation. So, so whatever our pricing is, uh, we'll, we'll do the first 20%, get them on the platform, get a ton of learning from that as well, but, like, but to offer a, a really nice way to get started um, by, by waiving a fee associated with that first 20% of your platform. So I'll leave that up there for the moment as we close. And Doug, it's such a pleasure. Caitlin, thank you for the time as well. Thank you both so much. And uh, thank you to Evident again for uh, sponsoring us today. And um, I think there might be a few other questions in the queue uh, that I will send over to David his way and uh, he will reach out to if he can get those answered for you. As a reminder that this was recorded and it will be up online along with this PowerPoint deck on community.franchise.org here in the next 48 hours. Uh, thank you all again for joining. David, Doug, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. It was great. So thank you thank all again. You. Stay safe, have a great rest of your week, and uh, don't forget to register for the IFA annual convention. It is virtual this year and it is happening later uh, February, the 16th through the 18th, as well as the 23rd through the 25th. So visit franchise.org slash convention for all the information and to register. All right, thank you all again. Have a great one. Thank you.